All right, guys, welcome to the French Toast Mafia. This is uh, the sports edition. We're going to be talking a little basketball, a little NBA playoffs, a little uh, bubble talk. We're going to uh, jump right into it. Well, well, first off, how you doing today, Joe? How's everything going with you, man? Oh, you know, good. Just finished up some good blade, and now I'm ready to whoop some ass on some basketball. Okay, okay. Uh, what about uh, 2K this year? You getting 2K this year? You going you gonna to wait to cop it, or what's your, what's your plans with that? Uh, I'm probably going to wait till my PlayStation goes out, and then I get the new PlayStation on the Best Buy card. Okay. Uh, is that coming out this year? Yeah, it's coming out this year, hopefully. It bet, damn sure better come out this year. My, shit, my PlayStation 4 about to go down. Did they drop a price on it yet? I, I don't think they have, like, official price. Them and Xbox are still fighting to see who's going to have the lower price, it seems like. But they don't want to go too low. So they're staying at, like, $7.99, $6.99. And both of them are like, ah, we, ah maybe we, they should just release at the same price and we'll get the choice who likes what more, Xbox or PlayStation. True, true. I think they should just probably just give us, like, another two years or something because I still feel like we still got some shelf life out of these uh, systems still. I mean, the systems aren't really that old. I'm over here making, like, growling noises and yelling at me and shit. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, it's time to cop a new one then. <laughs> yeah, just, I'm going to get a new one. It got to be the new, new one. You know what I mean? <laughs> bet, bet. Well, yeah, I guess we'll, we'll go ahead and just jump uh, jump right on into it. Uh, um, so we're going to first start off with, uh, as far as the playoffs go, we're going to talk about injuries. We're going to talk about injuries right now that are going on in the bubble. So we have uh, Russell Westbrook. We have TJ Warren. And then we also have uh, – Mike Conley, who left uh, the bubble, who this is a separate situation. It's not an injury per se, but he just welcomed the birth of a child. So congratulations to him. But uh, but what I want to ask you, Joe, is what do you think these uh, departures, uh, how are these departures are going to affect these teams going forward right now in the bubble? Well, first, can we just like talk about how Russell Westbrook gets hurt and it's Houston versus OKC and Westbrook's going to be out the first two games? Mm-hmm. So Chris Paul coming back playing Houston. Westbrook's supposed to be coming back playing OKC and how epic that would have been if this wasn't like a bubble and like you got Westbrook going back, like I said, Oklahoma City and Chris Paul in Houston, that would have been epic, a like fan yeah. environment. But I mean, TJ Warren playing our fasciitis, I mean, already down Sabonis and like how healthy is Oladipo at this point? Like The Pacers are probably, the Heat are probably going to push through that like six games if TJ, yeah. especially if TJ Warren is going to be hurt. I mean, yeah. Which one do you think? <clears throat> and Conley, I mean, Denver's probably going to win that either way. They're already decimated. Once you lost Bogdanovich and you had to go to Georgie Nain, to, that was about it right there. But um, which one do you think will hurt more, Westbrook or Warren? Uh, I definitely think the Warren injury probably uh, affects the team more because, I mean, you still, at, at least with Houston, you you still have James Harden who's putting up, who's going to give you 30-plus shots a game throughout this series. going to probably average like – in the high 30s, probably low 40s throughout this series, which I'm picking Houston to win in six. Um, but TJ Warren, I mean, definitely over, like, the course of, like, the last eight games in the bubble. I mean, if you look at what he did statistically, I mean, he kind of pretty much, like, became uh, became somewhat of an afterthought to, like, damn, they're, like, the best scorer on the team, you know, especially being yeah. healthy. So uh, I definitely think this injury kind of already decimates Indiana, who – Already, we're kind of playing behind the eight ball with the Oladipo situation and with the Sabonis situation as far as the injuries go. So, yeah, and then the injury that uh, TJ Warren has, it's not like a – this is this isn't like the type of injury that, you know, you sit a couple of days and it gets yeah. better. This one that's going to linger. So, uh, yeah, you pretty much say uh, – what did you say? You said they were losing six or five. Which to which one? The, the Heat, the Heat and the Pacers. I'm going to go six, but – I mean, I could see five easily just because, like, they don't, if Ol- Oladipo hasn't looked like Oladipo. And yeah. then if you're also looking at who's been your number one scorer, TJ Warren, also, you know, being hurt, maybe, what, 80%, 85% of what he is, no yeah. Sabonis. I mean, I'm going to go five, actually. Like, I talked yeah. myself in. I mean, the Heat are deep. They can go. Yeah, I'm, I definitely say but I say five. Yeah, yeah, I agree with you. I'll go five. This series is probably only the last five games. I wouldn't, I wouldn't be surprised if they got swept, but I'm pretty sure they'll probably still win. Um, yeah, they just that's really unfortunate for Indiana because when you look at the injuries that they have with the three guys that they have, I mean, they actually probably would have been able to to a healthy Indiana team would have been a scary team. So that just sucks for them. 
But uh, on the uh, – I'd say with Houston also, I think that series is going to go five games. I mean, they could – Houston plays a style that could take Steven Adams completely out of the game because he can't shoot. Mm-hmm. And, I mean, does Houston have that backup big man that can come in there and, you know, give him those minutes? Mm-hmm. I don't think so. Netherlands Noel is not going to give you those minutes, you know. Right. And, I mean, I definitely think that one's going to be a quick series also, even with or without right. uh, Westbrook. I think Houston would push for it. And that's right. no shot at that because, I mean, they're just young. Right, right, right. So uh, so basically we can both agree that uh, that Houston – and Miami will pretty much make short work of these two teams, and they'll be going on to their next challenge in the uh, the Eastern semifinals. Yeah, and like you say, it's unfortunate, especially for the um, Pacers. I mean, you add a legit Oladipo before he, you know, gets hurt, and then you add Sabonis. I mean, Sabonis was an all-star. Mm-hmm. That series goes – that's a seven-game series with Sabonis in there. Because, I mean, Sabonis, he can pass, he can shoot, he can score. I mean – like I said, that's just that's a huge, huge loss from both sides. And I mean, it's like I said, it's it's, it's taking that because uh, you know it's the T.J. Warren, Jimmy Butler beef, and it's taking that intensity of what that series would have been out of it. Right, right. Which is actually something too that uh, when you sit back and think about it from a playoff perspective, that's not the the beef that those two have. Isn't you know it added an extra layer, like you said, intensity to uh, to the playoffs that we haven't really seen in a while. Like, normally, I mean, I think, like, the, probably the most epic or intense playoff battle we've probably had, like, over the last couple of years, it's probably just been, like, the Cleveland uh, Warriors finals. Uh, That's all it's been, really. Yeah, really. It's so, more LeBron versus the Warriors. And, right, I mean, right, right, you, had, right. you had a couple of 3-1 series, like, devastates, you know, uh, OKC losing to Golden State in Houston. Also, um, Clippers, 3-1. But uh, like I said, it hasn't been one of those series where I felt like, you know, old 90 series where, like, somebody could really fight. And I feel like the right, Pacers, right. Heat, that would have been one of those series. Someone might actually scrap up. But, uh, right, yeah. Right, right. yeah. So, yeah. So, uh, you know, hopefully uh, Westbrook, uh, TJ Warren, you know, we wish you guys uh, the best of luck, hopefully getting healthy and getting back to your prospective teams and doing what you guys love to do. But uh, right now we're going to go ahead and transition into the uh, the bubble awards. So, as you know, that uh, – the NBA just recently, I believe it was on Friday, they released their uh, they released their press their press notes on the fact that uh, uh Dame Dame Dollar, uh, Damian Lillard uh, was unanimously voted the uh, the bubble MVP. Uh, right away what do you think it. about that? How do you feel about that? Think that was a good selection? Oh yeah, I mean it was unanimous. I think Devin Booker. I don't know when they voted on it, but I mean if they would have made the playoffs. Or made to the maybe even to the play-in game. I think he might have got a vote, one or two votes for it. Mm-hmm. But I mean, I mean, I think with the voting they showed, you know, I think it was um, Devin Booker had like 19 votes, second place, and then Luca, and then James Harden. Like we were just talking, T.J. Warren didn't get any votes. Like, what's up with that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I thought it was interesting that James Harden got a vote. I mean, he didn't. He didn't need a vote. That was a vote that definitely could have went someplace else. But yeah. like I said, TJ Warren yeah. could have got that vote. But um, yeah, I think a lot of uh, I think a lot of it too, as far as Dame goes. I think that uh, I think Lillard, the thing that kind of pushed Lillard over the top, was kind of been like a lot of the outside noise. I think you know when you go back to the Clippers game that they had a couple, what was it like last week, and uh, and what ended up that ended up transpiring to with the social media chirping between yeah. Lillard and a couple of the Clippers players. And then if you take into account, you know, yeah, then you take into account like the stuff he's been going through with uh with Skip Bayless, uh, Fox Sports and that stuff. And I think that kind of – and then seeing like how he's performed, Lillard's been having all of these guys, you know, call him out on not being clutch and, you know, not being that guy. And then like he ended up turning like the next six games he played, next five games. I mean, dude was averaging like 50 points a game. It was a monster. Yeah, it was a complete monster. So, I mean, I think I definitely think he deserved that award. Um, well, next we're going to go into uh, Monty Williams. Monty Williams was uh, voted uh, the the coach of the bubble, the best coach in the bubble. So uh, how do you feel about that? I mean, I don't think there's anybody else. Maybe Terry Stouts had an argument. Portland went like 6-2, and two, I think. But I mean, you go 8-0 and in the bubble. Like, that's yours, man. That's well earned. They might not have made the playoffs, but I mean, it's just for the bubble. And they were the best team record-wise in the bubble, especially considering where they were. 
Right. Do you think that uh, this will be anything as far as – what do you think this will affect momentum going into next season? Do you think this will be something that they could kind of help build off of and allow them to, like, maybe, um, you know, who knows, I mean, influence some major guys in free agency or something like that to come there and, and play with those guys? I mean, Monty Williams, I always thought he was a really good coach. And, I mean, I wanted him to come to the Lakers before we hired Frank Vogel, which I'm cool with now, obviously. But, um, I mean, I think that that team – they can go one of two ways. They could become that uh, the OKC team, not as good with the KD when they came through and they lost to the Lakers in that first round. I think they, they could go – that's probably their upside next year. Come in, go to sixth to uh, eight seed, play a really hard series with um, whoever the one or whatever bigger seed is. Or they could turn into that Kings team that we did really good toward the end of one year and then just fell off. That was just like two years ago with De'Aaron Fox and them. And they just fell off. There's one or two ways. I think it'll be the, the better way. I think they'll be a better team next year. So, you know, I mean, you got a pretty good draft pick. It's going to be in the lottery. And, uh, yeah, I think they'll be a better. What do you think? Uh, I think that – I think it kind of helps shed, shed, like, a spotlight on Phoenix. And I think that – well, I don't, personally, I didn't feel like Money Williams probably should have got fired when he was uh, coaching New Orleans. But – um. You know, but I guess that's a different scenario, too. Different situation, different scenario. Uh, Alvin Gentry I always thought he was a good coach. Job. Hmm? I was saying Alvin Gentry somehow usurping someone else's job and failing yeah. again. Yeah, exactly. And I don't – I mean, and Alvin Gentry, too, um, I, I think it's, it's, it's always kind of weird how a lot of these coaches kind of keep getting these jobs after failing, they fail one job and then they turn and they get another job and then they fail another job and then they get another one. And I won't be surprised Alvin Gentry will probably foot around and end up being like the coach of like the Kings or some shit. I mean, he'll be like an assistant coach on the Warriors for a year or two and then he'll go get him a job somewhere, mm -hmm. you know. Which is how he got the New Orleans job because he was like an assistant coach for them. So. And then, I, I mean, so not to stick on Alvin Gentry too long, but I mean, Mike D'Antoni was fired to bring Alvin Gentry in like, Big mistake already. Right, right. right. So, uh, yeah, and I mean, we also, too, another one of the awards that was uh, was selected was uh, Michael Porter Jr. was selected, the uh, bubble rookie of the year, or the the bubble rookie, most outstanding rookie. Uh, how did you feel about that selection? Did you feel like that vote could have went someplace else, or do you feel like he deserved it? No, I had to pick them. I have really no other candidates. Dude balled out. Oddly enough, sad story on it. I have a 2K where I've been playing every single game in a season, you know, season and a half in. Mm -hmm. And my number one scorer has been Michael Porter Jr. <laughs> so I've been rocking with this dude for a long time <laughs> on 2K. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and give it to him now also because I got snubbed right. on the All-Star in 2K. Right, right. Yeah, I mean, uh, I kind of feel the same way. I don't really think – I mean, you could have easily gone uh, Ja Morant, but – I mean, John Moran got the – he got the real Ricky of the Year award. So, I mean, that's whatever. But I, I feel like uh, Michael Porter Jr., um, I think it, the thing that was just impressive about the fact that he um, was able to win this award was considering the fact that he had so many injuries coming out of college. I think like he had like this, like this killer yeah, like back injury. And he might play like one his, game. Yeah, like his back, his back had been giving him problems in his knee and stuff like that. So, congratulations to him for just coming out and being healthy. Bowl. For sure. And, like he has, he's with him and Bo Bo with two guys coming out. They were, well, Bo Bo, they were like, he's a top 20 talent, but you know, injuries would be a reason. And Michael Porter Jr. They're saying this is when the draft was coming. He was going to be a, he could be a top three pick, but the injuries. Yeah. So the talent's yeah. there for a top three pick for sure. And he yeah. showed it, you know, obviously barring injury, yeah. knock on wood. He, I think he's going to be a really good player in the future. Right. Right. Yeah. So, yeah. So shout out to him for just, uh, like I said, just being healthy. Just being healthy enough to come out and just do the damn thing and just playing. So shout out to him for that. Uh, right now we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna transition into the uh, the first team and the second team selections. So uh, the NBA they also announced the all seeding games, first and second teams. And the first team was Dame Lillard, Devin Booker, Luka Doncic, James Harden, and T.J. Warren. How you feel about those selections? Man, it's fine. They went positionless. Uh, I guess James Harden got that MVP vote. And he got on the first team with it, which I mean, I would I don't think I'd put anybody else on there, other than James Harden on the first team. I yeah. think it's a good, good one. Maybe Giannis, but they lost more games than Houston did, so. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Uh, I think the thing that probably kept Giannis off of it was uh was the fact that they went like three and five in the bubble. 
they play yeah. like shit. You know, they play like shit. And, uh, and which is also kind of one of those things, too, where um, I think a lot of people, it kind of helped verify a lot of the worries and concerns that people have with Milwaukee as a team collectively anyway coming into this thing. They just have they they're a team that have they have one really 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 good player, and everybody else are essentially just role players. It's kind of like the LeBron thing in Cleveland for all those years. They don't really have extra guys that could go out and help them. So I, think yeah, I mean, I, I think Middleton's up. really good, but I think the real question for me from Milwaukee is, can they get over that hump? You know, mm-hmm. can you beat that team to get to the next point? Like, say if they're down three two to somebody in these playoffs, like can can they win two games in a row? Like, it would matter more if, you know, this was like, you know, fans were there and you got to go back to this team and then come back home. But either way, can you can you win those games that matter in those big moments? This is going to be a big thing for Milwaukee. Right. And like you said, uh, getting over the hump, because, I mean, let's all just be honest. I mean, if uh, this is the year, this is the year that they got to get to the final, because if they don't get to the finals this year, they, um, they're they going to be in trouble because next year they're going to have all uh, the Brooklyn Nets breathing down their throats with uh with KD and Kyrie Irving. And that's yeah, I don't want to uh, step on too much of my uh, playoff stuff. But, yeah, if they don't make it this year, yeah. you know, yeah, it's, it's only going to get tougher in the future. Yeah, yeah, they're in trouble. So, yeah, but I also agree. I agree the first team selection, yeah. Um, the, like I said, you could have thrown Giannis in there for, on the first team, but – I don't think I don't see anything wrong with the first team selection, but now the second team selections are uh, feature Giannis, uh, Kawhi Leonard, Kristaps Porzingis, Karis LeVert, and Michael Porter Jr. How you feel about those picks? I'd have probably I'd put Nurkic in there. Yusuf Nurkic, Portland center. I throw him in there instead of Karis LeVert. Dude's been a monster through the bubble. I mean, like I said, the guy's just been a beast. It's been, like, obviously weak points, but I, I just think he's done more than Karis LeVert for his team, and also I think he's been better than Karis LeVert. Because, I mean, for all intents purposes, who else is going to shoot the ball in Brooklyn? Like, uh, nobody? Yeah. yeah, nobody. I mean, Justin Anderson ain't coming out there and dropping 20 for you. Yeah, so, I mean, I, I would have – Yeah, like, I would have definitely given it to uh, Joseph Nurkic. That would have yeah. been my pick right there. Yeah. Yeah, um – I honestly felt like the only guy that really on the second team that would have been secured on there was probably Key, uh, Giannis. I could have did without Kawhi, Chris Stapps, uh, Karis, LeVert, or Michael Porter Jr., honestly. I could have did without all four of those guys. I feel like as far as the, as far as, uh, the Kawhi Leonard pick, you could have easily swapped him with uh, Paul George. I think Paul George averaged more points, but I just think Kawhi uh, scored at a higher clip. I think Kawhi's uh, field goal percentage was higher. I think he was shooting at like 52% or something like that throughout the bubble, which is, which is crazy. I mean, that just tells you that that dude's jump shot is like precision. So, um, but I could have deal without him because he didn't even play that much throughout the bubble. He sat more games than he played. Um, yeah, I'm fine with the selection overall. Like I said, I, I mean, if you put PG, I wouldn't have been mad if you put PG in there. But, I mean, I probably, I, I'm probably i fine with Kawhi being second team. Uh, also, too, I agree with uh, Nurkic. I would have put him over uh, over Chris Stapps. Uh, I'm not a Chris Stapps Porzingis fan. Uh, yeah. And, hell, it's just, I don't know. Just, that just wasn't a pick that I was very, uh, I didn't think that was a popular pick. I feel like they could have went somewhere else with a guy that actually deserved that. Uh, when Nurkic was coming off of like a freaking scary leg injury uh, a year from a year ago, they're just being able yeah. to do what he did, and then especially uh, finishing no, the last game. Uh, yeah, yesterday his parent, one of his parents died. Yeah, I'm his pretty mom sure. died. Yeah. Yeah, then he, I think he, what he had, what, what, 20, 20 points, 20 rebounds, like a 20 20 yeah, game? Six, like six. It was a good game. He played great. Uh, yeah, he's been balling. He's been balling out. Um, also, uh, Karis LeVert, yeah, I could have deal without that pick or the Michael Porter Jr. pick. I could have deal without either one of those. I felt like for the for uh, either one of those, you could have probably easily – um, you could have easily went um, – you could have threw in C.J. McCollum for one of those picks. You could have thrown in any number of guys that have that have played really, really I well. Think, uh, in the movie this year. If there was one guy I was going to add other than Nurkic, it'd probably be Ja. I think Ja might. Yeah, Ja Morant. Yeah, yeah, you could have easily thrown him on there. Over at Michael Porter Jr. But I think I'm fine with the rest of the guys other than Karras. I mean, Chris Stapps, he's probably the one, the next guy other than Karras, I think should be out of it. I have to throw Nurkic in that spot, throw Ja in the second team, and then keep it moving. That's how I think it should have right. been, at least. 
Right. Yeah. So yeah, I definitely agree with uh agree with with um with your takes on those. Uh, so now I guess we're gonna right now we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna transition into the playoffs. Now that everything has been kind of set in stone now, as far as with the seedings, let's go ahead and discuss the playoff set. Now we're first we're gonna go into the uh the top seeds and um instead of doing the west and the east, I kind of want to just get your opinion. And we're gonna flip flop if you don't mind. We're going to go ahead and do the, the tops versus the first seeds versus the eight, the top versus the bottom. So we're going to start out in the West, and we're going to talk about the Lakers in Portland. How do you guys feel about uh, Lakers and uh, Portland's matchup in this first round? Um, Gentlemen, thank you for waiting on me. Oh, yeah, no problem, man. What's up? Oh, good, yeah, man. Well, I guess it's you can get that first. the real Jimmy Sweats right here. You see all this? The real <laughs> Jimmy Sweats. <laughs> Welcome to Liam in right now. He's a little late. Yeah, had yeah, to take you know. care of some yard work last second. Uh, I'm renting the house from my stepdad. It's his house, so he decided he wanted to do it right then. So <laughs> there you go. Sure. Hey, you gotta you gotta do what the landlord says, man. Go figure. Well, yeah. yeah we're right now, Liam. We're right now, Liam. Uh, we're just in the middle of uh, wrapping up the the uh, the NBA broadcast. So we're gonna go, we're talking about the playoffs right now. We're talking about uh, the first seed and versus the eight seed. So right now, we're gonna discuss uh, the Lakers and the Blazers. On the Western. Okay. Yeah, I, I just saw the bracket for the first time today, so I guess it came out today, or? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so, so y'all go ahead, man. Just, uh, let me just oh, yeah, throw uh, off y'all's conversation. Yeah, but uh, the Lakers in Portland, I mean, that's going to be an annoying series. I'm a Lakers fan. Go ahead and get that out there. But uh, it's going to yeah. be an annoying series. The Lakers have issue at guard position. Losing Avery Bradley was a lot bigger than they thought. You know, you got two guards that can score at a high clip, C.J. McCollum and Damian Lillard. I still pick the Lakers, and I'm going to say six, but it's going to be a hard-fought six. Mm-hmm. And uh, Nurkic, I mean, like I said, we, we thought he should be on the bubble team, but, I mean, if you're throwing Nurkic against A.D., I mean, A.D. wins that every time. And, I mean, you have yeah. LeBron. So I think they're going to push it through six games. I think uh I think the thing for the this Lakers Blazers series that's probably just going to be a lot more frustrating for the Lakers probably than what they would have liked was just the fact that the Blazers caused the Lakers to play out of position um with so many different uh in so many different spots. So LeBron is essentially the point guard. So I mean so now I mean so what are you doing? Are you going to stick him on Dame or are we you going to rotate uh, one of the Sorry, I interrupted you, Jock, but I forgot completely forgot to mention nice. Melo versus LeBron. I mean, that's yes, the one yeah. versus LeBron matchup right there. That's going to be fun to watch, even though Melo's a little bit more past his prime. Skinny right, right, Melo so, yeah. versus Le- yeah, be- so, I mean, still a beast just... LeBron. Oh, yeah. I yeah. mean, the, the the year 17 uh, battle, both two guys that were drafted in the same year, uh, still playing, going hard at each other. Uh, it, I just feel like it just causes just a lot of different mismatches as far as uh, with what the Lakers do well versus with what Portland does well. But again, I mean, Portland, they have Dame Lillard, but they don't have a LeBron James or Anthony Davis. So I think that's just kind of where, um, yeah. in my opinion, I kind of just think that is probably a little bit too much to overcome. But this series is going to be a lot closer than what it needs to be probably. It's going to be probably, um, as we talk about the rest of the playoffs on both sides, it's probably going to be one of the tougher matchups any team's going to have to face in the playoffs for a first-round game. So um, Lakers, Blazers, what – um. Do you have anything to add on it, Liam, or do you have any uh, predictions on what this series is going to look like? Yeah, I just wanted to say, did y'all talk about Nurkic, uh, yeah, how have, they told yeah, him on the bus? Mm. Yeah, man, you can go on. We talked about it, but you can go ahead. What do you think about I mean, you go 20-20 and, uh, you think- and put the team into the playoffs the day your mom, like, you know, dies. It's like, you know, like, good for him. Like, you know, suck, shout out to him. Like, tough yeah. shit to go through. We played a great game, pushed his team through. I mean, yeah. unbelievable. Unbelievable. Yeah. It's got it one time for this gentleman. You know what I'm saying? Cheers to this gentleman one time. But, yeah. But, uh, yeah. hey, uh, do you think – is uh, Dame Lillard a free agent after this year? Nah, he signed an extension with Portland. He's going to be there for foreseeable future. No trade clause. No. Yeah, okay. I think for like another four or five years probably. All right. <clears throat> well, I do respect that, that he wants to be the guy up there, you know? Yeah. It's not definitely not an easy road, uh, especially when you're probably going to get beat, like y'all said, like in six by the Lakers. So yeah. there you go. Yeah. <laughs> and I mean, making it all the way to the Western Conference Finals last year, you got to wonder, is that like as far as he's going to get it? Yeah. yeah. Like you said, um, one of y'all said earlier, maybe in an 
earlier podcast, uh, you're like, I'd like to see Dame Lillard get it, but I just don't think it's going to happen, you know? <laughs> yeah, I mean, hey, he's one of those guys like Tracy McGrady. You know, you're like, he's he's good enough to, like, you want this oh, guy. Yeah. Should, he should be a champion. But, I mean, Gary Payton, happen, <laughs> Gary Payton comes out and, like, I don't know, he's one of my favorite players ever, so I'm just picking him as a random guy. Like, Gary Payton comes out and he, Michael Jordan's there, you know? He's good enough. He was yeah. good enough to be a champion. But Super Michael Jordan's there. Right. Uh, did you have any project, uh, predictions on what this how the series is going to go, Joe? Nah, just six games. Tough yeah. series. Yeah. I mean, Lakers have issues guarding guards. But, I mean, you got LeBron and AD, and that's what everybody's betting on anyway. Right, right. All right, then. So, we're going to go ahead. Then we're going to jump to the Eastern Conference, and we're going to look at the uh, the Bucks, who have the number one seed over there. And they're going to be playing the R8 seed Orlando Magic. Uh, what are you guys' yeah. opinions on this, on this uh, series? You can go first, Liam. Uh, I mean, I don't think the Magic are going to win, unfortunately. <laughs> no DJ uh, Yager in game one. <clears throat> <laughs> um, I don't think – I don't. I just – what, I, I might be five or six games. Yeah, that's what I, I, that's what I think. I got four. I think it's going to be a sweep, but I mean okay. – on a side- <laughs> See, I mean, that's come on. on I would just say five, but I gotta give them six, just so I don't sound like an asshole, you know. <laughs> but uh, so y'all see, Mar- Markel Fultz is starting at point guard now. Yeah. Do y'all think he ever becomes something like worth, you know, what something near what he was worth? You know, no, maybe I a six, six guy. Um, maybe we I don't think he. I don't think he's gonna become a superstar. Not, not from what, not from where he was drafted. He was like drafted with like number two the year. But could he be out. like a? Could he be like he's a? He's drafted number one, wasn't he, or number two? Uh, one overall. He was one overall. Yeah. Okay. I mean, but could yeah. he be a good role guy? Or yeah, I think he's gonna be a. I think he's a. I think he's gonna be a good role guy. I just think. But that, what's I, the I, role? <laughs> <laughs> you know. I think. Uh, what's the I think, role? I think that. Um, He'll probably give him. He'll probably give him like fifth. He'll probably be like a fifteen points per game type of guy. Fifteen points per game, maybe like four or five or six assists, something like that. Um, I don't think he's not going to be a twenty plus scorer like how he was in college or anything like that. Uh, I just think I think that the um, the wrist injuries I think just might have been just too much to overcome at so at such an early part in his career for him, and uh, I just think that. Um, but put him on the team, put him, putting him on Orlando where he doesn't have to be the guy, I think is a good spot for him. And unfortunately, they just for the second year in a row, we just have to play the best team in the conference in the first round. <laughs> yep. uh, but I mean, last year, I watched the game last year when they played Toronto game one and they won. And I was. Yeah, DJ Augustine you know, had him a career game. I mean, yeah, and they played extremely tough. So I mean, they've got the potential. They've got the potential to steal a game. So uh, I think yeah. they'll. I think it'll. I think it'll go five games. I think they'll win one. I think they'll they'll foot around and they'll win one. But um, Milwaukee, well, not even Milwaukee, but Giannis. I just think it's just too much to handle in a seven. Yeah, because season. they'll rest Giannis one of the games or some shit. Yeah, so yeah. we'll steal one. You know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, oh, so, yeah. yeah. I see five games in that series. Mm, mm, okay. <laughs> yeah so uh now we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna jump back over to the western conference and we're gonna tackle uh the second seed clippers versus the seventh seed dallas mavericks what do you guys feel about that matchup oh man i definitely uh the dallas is 0 three versus clippers in the uh regular season i think it's gonna be overhyped a lot of people are gonna be saying it's gonna be a great matchup but honestly i think it's gonna be like a five five game series I mean, Luke is young. He's going to have to take his licks. And, I mean, they have two of the best perimeter defenders, and then they can throw Patrick Beverly at Luka. And I don't think Chris Stapps can carry him to more than one win if he can get that. Yeah. The unicorn. Yeah, Yeah, but I'm, I'm going to say five games. Yeah. Um, I, think, I, think, I think they're going to probably sweep them. I'm going to go four. I just think that uh, – I think the matchups are just too much for uh, Dallas. Uh, if, like you said, I mean, you could – you're gonna they're gonna probably put Patrick Beverly on Luca just to harass him and piss him off. Oh, yeah, he's then they're uh, gonna put Paul. Uh, nobody's guarded Luca Doncic more minutes than Patrick Beverly this season. 
Yeah. And then they're going to put Paul George on him just to piss him off too and shut him down. So, uh, but which I still, I mean, Luca's going to get his points. Luca's going to probably still average like 25, 28 uh, okay. in this series. But I think they're going to pretty, pretty much, uh, they're going to, they're going to probably just uh, try to make the other guys beat them. And I don't think Dallas has enough other guys. If your number two, your number three guy is going to be Tim Hardaway Jr. Like, I'm just going to go ahead. You're not going to make it past the first round if Tim Hardaway Jr. is your number three guy. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. The Knicks is still strong with this gentleman, you know. But uh, <laughs> anyway, um, I was going to say, you know, that's obviously such a nice duo to have going forward, you know. Um, Luca and the Unicorn, but uh, aren't the Clippers one of the deepest teams in the league, you know? I mean, they've yeah. stacked it to make it to the finals over there or something, you know, yeah. to try to make yeah. it to the finals. Um, yeah. You know, the I mean, I can't even name a lot of the bench guys on the Mavericks. So, you know, it's no, it's a no-brainer. It's going to be the yeah, Clippers. Sure. All right, so now we'll go ahead and we'll jump back over to the East. We're going to go with the second seed Toronto Raptors versus the seventh seed New Jersey. Not New Jersey, I'm sorry. The seventh seed Brooklyn Nets. Uh, how do you guys feel uh, about this series? Oh, here's a, I okay, wish here's they in Quick and easy. Sweep. Karis LeVert's going to average 23 and shoot like 38% from the floor. That's it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I agree. You think it's going to be a sweep? Yeah, yeah, easy sweep, easy money. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I agree to uh like I said, next year next year when these two teams play each other it'll be a different it'll be a different matchup when they have Kyrie and K D playing in the playoffs. But uh but this year just with Karis Levert and and uh That's it. That's <laughs> Joe uh, Harris. Yeah, it's not enough. It's not enough to do anything against Toronto. Uh and actually I guess we'll we'll discuss this a little later on, but Toronto's probably has probably, in my opinion, jumped Milwaukee is like the best team in the East right now. But we'll get to that. So yeah, I'm gonna go with a four game sweep in this one as well. I mean, yeah, I'll say a sweep. I guess I'll we'll sweep the sweep right there. But um, <laughs> you know, if anything, they'll get one. I mean, they do have you know a few nice young players, but uh. You know, hopefully, I don't know what, like you said, uh, next year it'll be a different story with Kyrie and KD, but uh, hopefully Kyrie will have walked off the side of that flat earth by then. So <laughs> they got to start figuring some shit out, you know? <laughs> yep. <laughs> right. So now I guess we'll go ahead and we'll jump into the next uh, series of games, which will be the third, the three seed Denver Nuggets versus the six seed Utah Jazz. How do you guys feel about this series? Go ahead, Liam. Well, I mean, I like Donovan Mitchell, obviously, but uh, you know, I'm not I'm not even uh that familiar with the Nuggets, but um, I think Donovan Mitchell, you know, he's had to carry that team for a couple years now. Um, you know, I think they can steal a couple games, maybe. Um, but I I don't I think it might be closer to uh five or six games probably nuggets nuggets yeah yeah i mean i agree probably with five you games. probably like five games for the nuggets five is probably the safe pick i'm gonna go i'm gonna go six games you talk me into it actually i just love donovan mitchell so much yeah like i'm gonna give him two games donovan mitchell going for like 40 plus He's going to ball out, hit some big shots. And I don't know if you guys watched the bubble game between these two teams that went like three overtimes. They were just going like big shot for big shot against each other. But, I mean, Mike Conley now leaving the bubble. No Bagdanovich. I mean, Utah, they're down to like uh, Georgie Nang giving out big minutes. So, <laughs> George Niang. <laughs> yeah, well, what do you think, Jock? Yeah, I mean, I'm going to I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna say five. I'm going to agree with Liam and go five on this one. Uh, Denver just has too much. I think uh, they're healthier, and I think that has a lot to do with it. If uh, if if Utah didn't have the injuries that they had, it would probably make this make it more of a level playing field, in my opinion. It probably would even go six or seven games. But um, but Donovan Donovan Mitchell is, I think, unfortunately, he's uh, he's like the the D Wade of this Utah Jazz team. He's just like the yeah. the slashing shooting guard who doesn't just really have a whole lot around him right now. 
And uh, until he really fully develops a jump shot, I think he's just too one dimensional. And uh, and I just feel like you got the you got you got big Joker, you got big Joker sitting in the paint waiting on him at Denver and uh in in uh Jochich. and um yeah it's just too much. I'll yeah. Say, uh, <laughs> yeah. 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 So, so then from there, guys, well, I guess we'll go ahead and we'll jump over back over to the East and we'll uh, talk about the third seed Boston Celtics versus the sixth seed Philadelphia 76ers. Uh, how you guys feel about this series? All right, man. This is going to be my hot take and this is going to be, I'm going to go ahead and spoil it, my upset pick. I got the Sixers beating the Celtics, even though I told y'all Celtics were going to the finals. Been watching them. I mean, <laughs> they have no depth at all. Like Brad Wanamaker is like the top guard, one of the top guards coming off the bench. And it's cancer can't guard anything. And Daniel Tice is what you got for 20 minutes at center. Like the Celtics just, don't have any depth. You're saying yeah, they don't have depth outside the starting lineup. That's right. they got Kemba. You know, Jay. They're Lynn, gonna have to call back Brian Scalabrini. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but I mean, I think this is gonna be one of those situations where, uh, you know, like how Patrick Ewing, whenever that he got hurt, the '99 Knicks made the finals. Not saying 76ers are gonna make the finals. But I think they're going to play better with Joel Embiid as the focal point of the offense and not have to worry about getting Ben Simmons involved. I mean, Josh Richardson, hopefully he can turn back into Miami Josh Richardson. And uh, I'm picking him. I'm going 76ers. I think Embiid's going to handle it. He's going to put the work in seven games, seven game series. And give me Embiid hitting a game winning shot somewhere in there. Yeah, that is a hot take. That's a very, like that's that. a spicy, that's a spicy take. Spicy, spicy, spicy. I think I'm going to fucking go with that. Like, I mean, Joel Embiid is also one of my favorite players. But, I mean, you take Ben Simmons out of the paint, clear it out for Joel Embiid. I mean, he's – Daniel Tice, you tell me Daniel Tice is going to guard Joel Embiid. Ennis Cantor hadn't guarded anybody in his whole life. Right, right, right. We're not going to throw at Joel Embiid. I mean, hey. I mean, that's a good – that's a good take. But uh, but I'm gonna still go Celtics. I'm gonna go Celtics in six. Uh, I think Philadelphia will probably still two games. Um, and I actually, and the reason that I say Philly's gonna only win two is is actually for the reasons that you named. It's just because of the fact that I don't feel as if uh the Sixers have enough uh enough offensive firepower uh to kind of keep up with what uh Boston has. Um, Boston starting lineup alone, when you have Jalen Brown and you have Tatum. Um, and Kimball Walker, I just feel like the matchup. Great is, young core. Yeah, I just feel yeah. like those, I feel like that three man core just uh just their three their best three versus Philly's best three don't match up well. Also, I uh, forgot to mention Kimball Walker. Like his knees still been hurting him. So I mean, mm-hmm. are we sure he's gonna be healthy for this whole series? I mean, he's only been playing like twenty minutes a game in the bubble. Mm-hmm. Now, if he don't have that same like you know push off he does usually has, I mean, like I said, I'm. It's going to be a close series. Like, I picked Boston. You know, I told you I had them going to the finals. But, I mean, this is a really tough matchup, I just think, for them. What do you think, Liam? I mean, I think, uh, you know, not only you just talked me into it, obviously, but uh, I think I'm going to go with the Sixers here. But uh, I think I'm going with the Sixers because Joel Embiid is doing this well at this time. And, uh, you know, I think me and – I think – we have talked before about uh, this is pretty much they need to do this right now. You know, they need to win this game. Uh, they don't – their window is closing very quickly. Uh, they're young core of players. Um, ben Simmons, you know, you need to use what he can do well right now. Like you said, uh, get it down He's in the out. paint and let, and let uh, Joe MB do his thing and don't let – uh, ben Simmons worry about having to shoot. The guy can't fucking shoot, so don't lo- so don't worry about it. You know. Yeah, if they can get like a couple of rounds and Ben Simmons comes back from his like fucked up knee, then I mean, then we'll see, we'll see what's going on there. But they got to get those rounds first. Right. I mean, the the window is gonna is gonna close pretty soon for these guys if they don't do something here. So they gotta yeah. make some noise quick because Giannis isn't going anywhere. You know. Oh. <laughs> Right. So, yeah, so now uh, I guess we're going to go ahead and we're going to jump over to the West and we're going to discuss uh, the fourth seed Houston Rockets versus the fifth seed Oklahoma mm-hmm. City Thunder. What do you guys feel about this series? Well, I uh, I talked to you about this a little bit before the podcast about how this Russell Westbrook is going to be out for the first few games. And this is supposed to – if this was like fans, like Russell Westbrook going back to OKC, Chris Paul going back to Houston, 
first round series of the year after the trade. I mean, it has everything you want, but I wish Chris uh, Russell Westbrook wasn't uh, out the um, first few games of the series. But I'm going Houston either way. I think it's going to be a five game series. I think Houston's going to, I mean, I don't, they can take Steven Adams completely off the court because they go so small and they shoot so well. So, I mean, even Ben McLemore has been re- somehow became a solid player at this point in his career. So I'm going Houston five. Okay. How you feel about it, Liam? What you thinking? Yeah, I'll take Houston and uh, I'll say, you know, five games. Yeah, I'll agree with that. I mean, you know, it's just pretty much a deeper, slightly deeper Rockets team and James Harden. And, you know, I hate him. So what, and what, if it, if the at the end of the day if the game comes down to the foul call they're gonna give it to James Harden because they always do, so no matter what the Rockets are gonna win because he'll get the call. So. <laughs> yeah, uh, I agree. I agree. Uh, Houston's gonna win this series and probably uh, five. Uh, I just feel like uh, OKC doesn't have a guy on their team that that's gonna consistently give them thirty points a game. They don't have a guy on that team that does that. Um, they're more they're more of a collection of individuals, uh, and you have uh, Chris <laughs> Paul, Chris Paul, who, who's man in that that offense as a well oiled machine. But uh, but when you look at Houston, I mean, they got a guy in James Harden that any, any given night this dude is dropping 40, 50 points a game. Has an he, argument he, for MVP four years in a row. Yeah, and he does it so effortlessly. I mean, it's it's just uh the the way that the way that he runs that offense or the way that Dan and Tony gives him the freedom to just do whatever the hell he wants to do in that offense. I just think that's just probably a little, just too, a little bit too much for OKC. So, yeah, I'm going to go out five games, Houston, in this one as well. Yeah, He's put in the position to get, you know, these crazy numbers, and he gets them because, like you said, Dan Tony's – I mean, he literally is the perfect guy for that guy's system, you know? All right, guys. So those I are know. Much I hate him. He's out there getting those numbers. It makes yeah. you wonder if Steve Nash would have been like actually shooting the ball like point guards nowadays with his efficiency, what his numbers would have actually been. Because huh? I mean, instead of taking like six threes a game nowadays, he'd be taking like eleven, and he's he's over forty percent three point shooter. I'm I'm pretty sure close to it for his career. That boy, D'Antonio. <laughs> yeah. It's me, D'Antonio. <laughs> All right, guys. So yeah, that was uh that was our uh our outlook on this uh. Don't forget first- the uh the, pa- the Pacers in the Heat. Oh oh. Okay yeah yeah yeah. Oh, yeah big one there. Okay. okay. All right. Yeah. The, this was oh, well, in my opinion, this is actually what I thought was going to be the uh the series of the uh, first round. You know, honestly, up until all these injuries kind of stepped in. But let's go with uh, the fourth seed, uh, Indiana Pacers versus the fifth seed, Miami Heat. What do you guys feel about this series? Saw you, Liam. Miami Heat. <laughs> Quick on it. <laughs> That's about That's all you can really say at this point. I'll tell you. Uh, I'll tell you. Maybe make it six games, because I mean, this is just a toss-up series to me. I mean, I I, I would agree, but I, I just with the injury, it's a bonus is gone. And I mean, I like Brogdon's done a lot for him, but I mean, I just don't know if T.J. Warren with his health, like what percentage is he's going to be at. So I'm gonna go he, but I, I'm gonna give him. I'm gonna go six, five games, five games, a close five, a really close five that could be six. <laughs> yeah, uh, I'm gonna go five games as well with this series. I just think the injuries are just too much. Uh, and like uh, me and Joe, we were talking about earlier, but the injury that uh, that T.J. Warren has right now, it's not like a. This isn't like a you take a couple of days off and you know your foot feels better type of injury. This is an injury that's gonna like linger for a while. So um, that and then with Oladipo being out and with Sedona, so with uh, Sabonis being out, I just don't feel like they have enough uh, to match up with Miami. So, yeah, in a, agreeing with Liam and you, Joe, going to go Miami on this one. Uh, I'll say five games. Uh, I would not be surprised if it was four, if it was a four-game sweep. Yeah, I was about to strange. say every, everyone's argument seemed to uh... – warrant that it should sound like it needs to be less, you know? <laughs> do it. Yeah, but I'm going to jump down a little bit, Jock. So, me and I'm, – I'm interested to hear this from you. Me and Liam have already given our upset. We said the Sixers are going to go over the Celtics. So, mm-hmm. who's your the upset? Do you have any upsets for this first round? Uh, no, I don't. So I don't you have think it's a scratch first round? 
if I if I had to pick a team, if I had to pick a team to upset, I would say uh um on the offhand chance OKC balls out. I could say OK OKC yeah. could possibly be uh Houston. Okay. Yeah, I would go there. But other than but no, I don't really see any major upsets happening. That is true. I mean I do think the Sixers are going to be there, but I mean everything else. It's like a it's like a college bracket that's uh, like ridiculously straightforward, you know. <laughs> so I guess uh, you guys ready to go in this 2009 Magic team? Oh uh, yeah, I'm ready. All right. Well, I mean, I'll just go ahead. It'd be like a little short conversation, maybe 10 10-ish minutes, but uh. And Joe Smith became the GM, you know, and here's some of his here's some of the moves that he made. They were key moves for this team. Uh, drafted JJ Redick, 11th overall, and then trade he traded Trevor Ariza for Mo Evans and Brian Cook. But he signed Rashard Lewis, Michael Petras, drafted Courtney Lee, 22nd overall, and when uh, Jameer Nelson was hurt, he traded for Ray for Austin in a three-way trade, which Kyle Lowry went to Houston in that three-way trade. And uh, Skip, so, he like, traded for Skip to my loop. Yeah, there you go. And then, uh, just um, the playoffs overall. I mean, the first y'all finished 59 to 23, third seed, beat the Sixers in six, and then played the Celtics, the defending champs, with no KG, seven games. Tough series. I mean, somehow Big Baby Davis became like a legit power forward that series, somehow. And then uh, just handled the Cavs. Like, it was supposed to be that year. They had the public commercials for LeBron and Kobe. It was supposed to be LeBron versus Kobe in the finals. And the Magic just devastated the Cavs. And, I mean, LeBron had great numbers. But nobody else could do anything. And the Magic, like I said, it's 4-2. Four, four, or four, two, And, I mean, it should have been 4-1. Because LeBron hit that game-winning shot, fading away around half court. Just chuck it up. It should have been a 4-1 series. But uh, what y'all, before what we get the to only- one of the only important game-winning shots that he's actually ever hit. Yeah. yeah. But um, Even so, he was so surprised that he hit it. He was like, oh. Yeah. You know? <laughs> so other than the finals, so I'm going to get to the finals in a minute. But other than that, what y'all's, like, Jock, what's your memory of the 2009 Magic? I mean, other than, you know, being way ahead of their time. Um, well, yeah, other than, other than them being, like, basically one of, like, today's NBA teams because uh, – this team was actually built the way they built this roster. This team was was more so like a European team. You had you had big big guys who could handle the ball and could shoot. Um, you know, you had Rashard Lewis who was six ten. You had Hidu Turkulu who was six eleven. You had Michael Peters who was uh, six eight. Um, you had Ray for Austin who was a big point guard at like six five. Um, you had Martin Gortan who was coming off the bench at seven feet tall. Uh, you know, I mean, they had a lot of size on this team. And um, I think the the thing that I remember most about this team, actually, was the fact that how well we drafted, like, over the course of, like, two to three years. Like, we drafted really, really well. You know, you look at J.J. Reddick, then you look at uh, Courtney Lee, and it's, and, it's just, and it's just amazing because, like, now when you look at the Orlando Magic, if you look at, like, their last ten picks over the last ten years, they don't draft, like, this at all like none of those guys are on any of those teams still so yeah. um <clears throat> that was just something that i remember i remember watching this team uh this year and just being like wow like we were able to accumulate and we were really able our our gm at the time was just really able to put a good group of guys around each other and then um and the thing, <laughs> yeah and the thing that i thought was really good about this team that none of these guys took away from the fact that Dwight Howard was still the superstar like none of these guys, right. you know. That's yeah, you crazy, know, man. Guys, yeah. So, I mean, essentially, so Liam. Every one of these guys is a name guy in their own right, you know. So Liam Dwight Howard, three-time Defensive Player of the Year in this strand. Like, how how other than you know how he left? I mean, how how big of a fan were you when Dwight Howard was with the Magic? Did you think they were going to go to the finals or? I mean, I liked him, you know, but uh, even as a Magic fan, I was never the biggest Dwight Howard guy, to be honest. Um, You know, I liked it when he was getting 20 and 20 a game, you know. uh, (laughs) 
that's around these times. But, um, you know, I, uh, I honestly thought that this was one of our best chances that I had ever seen since, you know, Penny Hardaway and shit. Um, because look at all these guys, every single one of these guys. Look, we ended up having Tyron, Lou. We still had Hito, Turgaloo kicking around. This guy was born in 1979. You know, he was still <laughs> kicking around. Uh, Michael Petrus, like y'all said. I mean, it was just, it was like watching a video game because they could play so fast. You know, you can kick it around as many times as you want. Anyone who gets the ball can hit that three and then you can kick it down low to, like y'all said, um, Marcin Gore Tater Tot. And, uh, you know, Dwight Howard, um, you're telling me everyone can shoot and then you have two dominant centers inside? I mean. So I guess know. this is a good time to hit on it then. I'll. Uh... And, uh, yeah, so what happened to this team, you know? <laughs> <laughs> but uh, Dwight Howard. He's like one of the weirdest players in NBA history because, I mean, I hated him That's as a Laker guy, like watching him. But now I kind of really like him on the Lakers now. So it's like, you I'll know, bet. even with the Magic, you guys liked him. And then, you know, obviously he left and like it's like I hate him. So he's going to have – like what's his legacy? What do you think, Ja? I mean, uh, <clears throat> he's a Hall of Fame player. Yeah. Um, I mean, like, from a fan perspective, what's his legacy going to be? Will he be, like, one of the love players, or he would just be, like, somebody forgotten? Well, uh, it'll be – he's going to be – he's going to be looked at, like, how Shaq was. Because even – because, like, when Shaq was playing, like, Orlando fans hated Shaq because of how he left. But um, but we learned to kind of appreciate him after the fact. Like, after he retired, we learned to appreciate him. They're going to probably one day put a statue of I, – I think that they should put a statue of him and Penny. Like, I think they deserve statues outside of Orlando Arena. And uh, just for what they did to that, did for that, uh, for that city and for that, for that team, it was an expansion team. And then, like three years later, they were like going to the Eastern Conference Finals. You know, oh my so, God, um, I totally agree with that. Uh, it was just something for play. It was just something. Uh, this little Disney World expansion team before Shaq got there. Um, you know, I uh, I'm never gonna compare him to Shaq because I had. Shaq shorts. I had the Walmart line that he used to have. You know what I'm saying? I had where it was him dunking on the logo. You know, um, I don't ever think he was Shaq's caliber, but I mean, it was kind of a different era of basketball. But I mean, this guy was getting 2020 for a couple solid years there. So I mean, I can never hate on what Dwight Howard did as a, as a player for us, but I just think he acted like such a kid. Um, and I think he got Stan fired, you know? So, yeah. Um, yeah. I, can't, I can't really yeah. forgive him for that, man. Like, I don't know. Yeah, he, I, I, I just yeah. think he, he was such a little kid, and he was such a weird little kid, to, to, be, to be honest. Yeah, so uh, he's very immature, very immature. Yeah, very yeah. immature for somebody so talented and chiseled like a Greek god, you know? <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, here you go. I'm going to the finals. So, there's like a legitimate case to be made that you guys could have been up 3-1 after four games. And it's not even like a fluke case. So, I'm going to start with game two. The game's coming down to the end. Courtney Lee has a layup. And I mean like a layup. And then a regulation. To win the game, misses it. And then the next possession, Turkaloo blocks Kobe. So we're going to overtime. And then toward the – no, no, no. Turkaloo gets the block, and then the Magic get another possession. Layup, Courtney Lee, alley-oop, wide open. Misses it. Overtime, Lakers end up winning. Pau Gasol has uh, seven points in overtime. But literally the Magic is supposed to be 1-1 tied right now at game two. And then game four, the Magic are up with, with a minute and 30 seconds left. The Magic are up 87-82. Kobe has that spin pass to Gasol, and there's 30 seconds left. And then Howard, a couple possessions later, gets the ball in the paint, and Kobe slams him on the ground so he had to shoot free throws. So Howard's on the line. The score is 87-84 to with a chance to ice the game with about 10 seconds left. Dwight Howard is literally on the line to ice the game. And – this would be the point where y'all would be up 3-1 if, you know, game two goes your way. Misses both free throws. Lakers get the ball. 
They double teamed Kobe in the half court. He passes to Fisher. And for some reason, Jameer Nelson's behind the three point line guarding Derek Fisher. And Derek Fisher shoots the three and hits it. And then the Lakers, you know, he hits another three and he wins uh, that game. But I mean, at this point, there's a legit argument. The Magic should have been up 3 1. They blew two opportunities to win two separate games. And you're heading back to Orlando 3 1. So I was saying, do you how do how do you guys remember this finals team? Like, do you do you think there was that chance? Because I mean, it literally was there. Like they had the opportunities, they just kind of choked it away. Uh, I never really thought that chance was like that much there. <laughs> you know, I mean, like, missing layups and free throws to ice games, and just giving the game away. I mean, there's two times the game was given away. I mean. And Turkey- Big shots in game four. You know, our leading scorer, yeah. our leading, like, minutes. Look at that. Our leading guys, like, Hito Turgaloo, man. Like, we should have been playing faster than that, man. Yeah. Yeah, uh, and you know, the moment where Trevor Ariza shoots, like, a random 26-footer to get it within, like, five, and it's – And he made it. Random luck, it seems like, for the Lakers. I mean, I'm a Laker fan, so, I mean, obviously I'm happy with the championship, but I just think that there is a legitimate argument that the Magic, like, they could be 3-1 winning the championship right there on the on the crash of it. I mean, I remember I remember prior to this when Orlando made it to the finals, and because um, I think y'all had to beat Denver to get to this finals, I, I believe. And yeah, County Phillips and Mello. Yeah, y'all went seven games with against Denver, right? Yeah, it was six or seven. It was yeah, a hard, it was a tough remember, game. Yeah, I remember, uh, and I remember one of the main things that everybody was saying because Orlando had such a long layoff from when they beat Cleveland, and it was just such a long layoff. And um, I just remember it being one of those things where it was like everyone was saying, "Oh man, Orlando's really got a shot. They really had a shot because of the fact that how Dwight Howard had played like up until that point in the playoffs. He was like." like damn near dominant. There was like it because at that point it was like a discussion on whether or not he was like the third best player in the NBA at that point. And um I think because I even think I think game one, I think Dwight struggled, if I remember correctly. I think he struggled so many free throws to the point where he would have had twenty a game if he just hit like sixty five, seventy percent of his free throws. But he's shooting fifty percent and under. Yeah, but um, I don't, but I don't blame the white for this uh for like the shortcoming in this series. The thing that always bugged me about this series was the fact that uh, um, Jameer Nelson had gotten hurt. Prior that was my to the point. Break. I was gonna ask you about. Yeah, Jameer Nelson had gotten oh, hurt prior Jesus. to the All Star break. So yeah, so uh, so when they made the trade, that was when they had to make the trade with Houston to get Ray for Austin. So when Ray for Austin came in, uh, Ray for Austin balled out. Oh I even my think God. that was even I even okay. think that was like a it was a I think there was even a game like in the Celtic series where Rafe Austin had like twenty seven points or something like that. Yeah, he um, played great. Yeah, played okay. fantastic. Yeah, I so, feel a um, lot better about that now. I forgot that that's exactly why he uh came there. Why uh yeah. Skip came there, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I mean, so would it be safe to say a healthy Jameer Nelson, because he was hurt in those finals, he's playing. He's averaging like three points a game. <laughs> He shouldn't have played, but he played because – So, healthy Jameer Nelson – that's what I mean. Healthy Jameer Nelson, you got two chances to win two games in the finals to be 3-1. I mean, there's a legitimate argument to be had there. Yeah. And then if you yeah. had a skip playing anywhere near like that, like off the bench, you know what I'm saying, or some shit. Well, like they're, that. they're giving those minutes to Jameer Nelson, who's literally just a guy out there doing nothing because he can't shoot because his shoulder's messed up. And, I mean, at that point, we don't have to guard you. We can just play Dwight inside. And, I mean, foul him. He's going to miss his free throws. But, I mean, healthy Jameer Nelson, you got to be out there guarding him. Pick and roll was was deadly that year, him and Dwight Howard. Yeah, right. and that was the thing. I think I think, uh, I think think Orlando felt obligated to Jameer because up to that point, I think Jameer was even an all-star that year. Uh, I think it was just because of the fact that he had played so well prior to the all-star break. And then when he got hurt, it was just kind of like, oh, no, Jameer Nelson's hurt. Yeah. So um, they felt obligated. So when he so when he was healthy enough to play, instead of just allowing him to stay, he because we were on a run, we we had momentum. Yeah. We had the lineup was set a certain kind of way, and I just think that when he came in, I just kind of think that that threw off the chemistry that um that we had offensively. 
because even at that point, uh, Turkey Glue was the one that was handling the ball. Turkey Glue was pretty much the point forward and was the one that was calling the pick and roll and setting the screens and things like that. But when Jameer Nelson came back, that took the ball out of Turkey Glue's hand and put it back in Jameer's hand. And it forced those guys to have to now have to go and play, you know, play differently than what they had been playing. So um, that was why I think Orlando lost this ser- lost this series. Not the main reason, but I think that had a lot to do with it. I just think that Jameer Nelson coming off of that injury early and coming in and playing through off the chemistry that they had. And before you know it, Trevor Reese is hitting 30-foot jump shots and Derek Fisher's falling out of bounds, hitting three-pointers. And Courtney Lee's missing finger roll, wide-open layups, and you had a recipe for disaster. <laughs> I do remember um, them interviewing uh, Skip Tamalu, Ray for Alston, you know, after a game. Uh, they were putting a lot of pressure on him even, uh, just talking to the guy. Uh, you know, can, are you going to be able to fill in, you know, and all this stuff? He's like, and I've been playing basketball all my life, man. I, I'll be just fine, you know. We got a good ball club here, you know. We feel good about it. And uh, I just remember that they were putting an awful lot of pressure on on him, um, you know, I, I guess it was deserved because, like you said, you know, we had the team to go, man. We had – this was our shot there, so. Yeah. I mean, and, you know, and thinking about it, too, when you go back to that season, remember, that was the year after the Celtics won that championship. So, initially, we weren't even supposed to be in a discussion. That was supposed to be the Celtics' uh, repeat year. But then KG gets hurt, like, in the preseason or some shit. Yeah. But then he's out the whole Anything year. is possible, man, yeah. <laughs> and, then, and, then, and then Nike kicked up. LeBron had the shoes, dropped the shoes, where I think, like, the, the opening night commercial was when uh, he's doing the powder, and the powder falls on <laughs> Lil Wayne's shoes. Lil Wayne is wearing the LeBron's, and he wipes them off his shoes. And then next thing oh, you know. It was also the year that uh, it's on a Laker note where Lil Wayne made that song, Kobe Bryant. Oh, okay. So, yeah. Yeah, so, I mean, it was, uh, very, it was a very commercial – it was a very commercial year that year for a lot of different reasons. And, um, you know, and then the puppets, yeah, I mean, they had the sure. – broke LeBron broke everybody wanted that LeBron-Kobe uh, matchup, like yeah. I said. Orlando wasn't like, nah, going to play Orlando this year. <laughs> we weren't even, weren't even supposed to be in, even involved in the discussion, so. Yeah, you know, but well, I mean, you I'm, got it. You know. You know, I was going to ask, is Stan Van Gundy <laughs> underrated for getting these good plays, you know, with Dwight Howard open in the paint the game four and uh, our game two and Courtney Lee wide open alley-oops, and it's like, nah, he's properly rated. Yeah, I mean. Properly he's, rated. Yeah. And the crazy thing about it, though, Stan Van Gundy's probably like, you know, top three with one of the best coaches Orlando's ever had. And I <laughs> feel like – you know, it's, <laughs> oh yeah. It just kind of it kind of tells you too, and it kind of shows you too, like the makeup of the organization as a whole, because they pretty much they allowed the star player to fire the head coach, and then they turn around and traded the star player, like. <laughs> the <next year>. So. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I mean, that's everything. pretty good. <laughs> Shout out in that trade was when the 76ers got Andrew Bynum and he never played for him. <laughs> yeah, you know, I mean, kind of tells you everything you need to know about um about how Orlando, what Orlando thought about their personnel for one. Yeah, I mean, uh, even, even look at the team the following year, like they traded JJ Reddick, then they trade, then they trade Rashard Lewis, and then they trade Arenas, trade Rashard Lewis contract for a bigger contract in Gilbert Arenas. Is Rashard so Lewis still Arenas playing? No, 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 no. He's he's and the Miami. After, uh, that was just. No, no. Yeah, and that was right after Gilbert Arenas pulled the gun on the guy in the locker. Locker room. Like one of the oh, okay. How do you how do you let go of Turkaloo and bring in Vince Carter, who's way over his prime? Turkaloo was obviously like you're in the finals, he's hitting huge shots. He's like the focal point of the offense. Essentially, Dwight gets lost, but it's Turkaloo's offense. And it was successful. And you're like, you can go to Toronto. Well, <laughs> part of that was on Turkey Glue too. Turkey Glue Tur- he he knew he wanted that money. And you can't blame him for wanting that for wanting that contract that Toronto offered him. But yeah, in gotta, the same token though, yeah, he had to get that contract. But in the same token too though, that team that he went to in Toronto was like 
that was that wasn't a team he was going to go and do anything with. And he was only there. For, he was there for like a year and a half before he was back in Orlando. So, yeah, he should have just whatever contract Orlando offered him. Orlando, I could understand Orlando not wanting to match the contract because he was already like thirty. He was already like thirty six at that point. Or yeah, something. but I mean, you give him like a two year deal with a little bit more money, and that's you know. Yeah, but that's one yeah, thing. That's like another a four thing. year, forty five yeah, so million. This is just a. Uh... Yeah, that's another thing too, though. We know this just definitely like, upholds your point. I mean, the mismanagement of uh, a great fucking team that had been built. Like, like you build a great house and then you tear it down yourself with a sledgehammer. Yeah, I mean, you know, what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm not, but the last thing I'll say is, uh, I mean, they had two chances to be up three-one going back to Orlando, and that Orlando yeah. crowd was jumping. Like, it was yeah. that Orlando crowd. See, so y'all had Tiger Woods, you know, hanging out there before his uh, – him and his yeah. wife had this – I mean, he was y'all's Jack Nicholson. And, I mean, it was pumping. I would just say that y'all had the chance. That's right. Mismanaged after that point because there were still other chances to be had with that team, I just think. Yeah, I agree. But, yeah. <sighs> of course. It was a complete mismanagement. I mean – you can't you can't not agree with it. I mean it sucks that's the uh that's the the other side of the Lakers fans dream you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah yeah man so we don't so, yeah, have any a, of the rings to show for anything so yeah I mean and that that uh, as a whole that was the uh that was the 2009 magic what could have been and unfortunately, which is crazy because this is a franchise that has a lot of those what could have been moments. So, and my yeah. God, and to shove it down our throat one more time, Jock, look how many things that we've given to the Lakers just to tough <laughs> it off. My God, he's got he's so much gotten so much enjoyment out of fucking Shaq, and now he's getting it out of Dwight Howard. Uh, I never had any. I never had any enjoyment out of Dwight Howard. It was always fuck that. No, guy. you're gonna get it when you when he helps get you a championship. Till now, like he's cool now. Yeah, see, there you've already had enjoyment. But this is after the Washington, so it's more like Washington's trash we're enjoying. All right. That sucks. I mean. But yeah, but yeah, man. But I can't so do hard, anything but... about it. So. <laughs> yeah, but I think uh, I think that and wraps up the. Uh, but I think that wraps up our French Toast Mafia sports broadcast. Uh, we talked bubble talk. We talked uh, bubble awards. We talked playoffs. And we talked 2009 Magic. So uh, I believe the next time that we uh, we reconvene, we will be discussing uh, – uh, I believe we should do the second round. Should we do the, semi- the semifinals of our playoff bracket? Uh, I think we should wait until yeah. – uh... We do it in the second round. Okay. Okay. Well, I'll go either way. <laughs> but uh, I was gonna say, right, you know, yeah. next time let's do the one where the Magic win the championship. <laughs> no, but, uh, <laughs> I don't. I think we'll have to keep looking for that file. So. Uh, yeah. Yeah. One day. One day. Hopefully, bef- hopefully when we're not like old and gray. <laughs> but yeah, but maybe um, we'll see it in my lifetime, yeah, gentlemen. Yeah. yeah, but this was fun though. But yeah, you guys want to go ahead and jump into the other one? Uh, yeah, uh, yeah. And this one, I gotta uh, use bathroom and get something to drink real quick. Yeah, yeah. All right, so yeah, all right then. All right then. We got thanks. Uh, thanks for watching the French Toast Sports broadcast, guys, and uh, we'll see you guys next week. All right. Take it easy, guys.